Well, good morning. Good to see you. It's uh, digging deeper time again as we come around God's Word um, during this Corona crisis. A broadcast from Shaw Hope Church, which is friends and family that join with us each day, um, digging deeper into God. It's um, tough times. Um, it takes resolve, and everybody has all these wonderful explanations as to what it takes to get through these uh, these difficult days. But there we are. We, we're we found a solution and it's not found in ourselves it's found in him alone and it's called digging deeper into god so we're going to dig a bit deeper again today um january the 18th that's uh, right start of another week uh 2021 as we are seeking god and to know his will and his plan his purpose and his um his signposts as we've seen in psalm 34 um we're going to come across the fourth of the last signpost um the first one was praise god the second one was seek god the third one was fear god and now today live for god um that's for the rest of the psalm so this week the signpost that god is giving us uh to know how to live in with real happiness and contentment is live for him live for god and uh, and see what he does so let's uh, first of all going to read uh, Psalm 34 from the New Living Translation and today we're just going to concentrate on a, 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 a really quite poignant verse, uh, verse 14. So we'll read up to verse 14 today. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you only, sorry, fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes grow hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me. And I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's up to verse 14. And that's verse 14 we're going to focus on today. So far, we've seen David's worship, David's witness, and we're now seeing David's uh, wisdom. And this is where take action takes over from fine sounding words. We're fed up of fine sounding words, aren't we? Yeah, we, we're fed up, fed up of the of the sound bites and the and the one liners that have been worked on by some. Uh, by some uh, <laughs> political um, advisor who who who's decided that he's come up with the the key phrase that if it's repeated often enough, we'll believe it or we'll fall for it even. But there we are. So today we're going to see very clearly that action actually takes over from fine sounding words. Um, first of all, David says, turn, <laughs> we're back to U-turns again, turn from evil, a change of direction, a change of heart, a change of motivation, a t change of, um, of, of, uh, focus. People who have, um, one thing on their mind constantly, it, it could be, it could be anything, you know, it, it, it's, it. It saddens me when people become so engrossed and and focused on just one aspect of life that they 
they think it is the be all and end all of everything um that the whole of life is geared around um you know you see that with uh, addicts you know whatever the, their addiction um the, the, there's one thing that's on their mind all the time you know it doesn't have to be um illicit drugs it, it can be you know alcohol or, or um, pornography or um gambling it, it's the addiction of it's a focus it's a, the mind so sadly becomes completely attached to the one issue and everything in life revolves around that one issue but david says if you want to know the fear of the lord if you really want to know what it is to live for god then turn 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 from evil um <laughs> and now we have <laughs> Now we have the last good in the, the little section of goods. Did you, did you notice them? <laughs> There's a few goods in there, isn't there? Um, and, and here we have the last of them that's found in, in these verses. Um, and it says, turn from evil and do good. <laughs> oh, really? If I should say such a thing? <laughs> yes, doing good. Um <laughs> and it repeats itself, by the way, right throughout the New Testament. And boy, do I get in trouble for this. Listen, it's not that we're saved by good works. I know that. You know that. Well, I hope you do. It's not that you can work your way to heaven with doing good. No, no, that doesn't work. No, we've all fallen short. We've all messed up. We are all fall short of God's perfect standard. There's only one way. And that is through the receiving forgiveness through the blood of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. That he paid the price for your sin and my sin. And that as we repent of our sin, as we turn from evil, then then we will know forgiveness. And that's, that's what gives us our ticket to heaven. <laughs> nothing, nothing I can do, nothing you can do. However, having turned, <laughs> David says, now there is something you can do you're not saved by good works you're saved to do good works paul says in ephesians and so there's some good things that need to be done <laughs> um the, the the goods in the in this section we've got the lord is good we've got seek the lord and lack no good thing and then we've got uh that you will know many good days in the new international version and now we have um turn from evil and do good <laughs> so the negative counsel of david um in how to fear the lord turn if you see that as negative here's the positive and do good <laughs> you see some people struggle with the negative of having to turn oh but actually if you balance the two up if you, in your turning and change of heart and change of mind and change of direction and change of focus, then there is something good that needs to be done. And, and it's far, far better not doing one thing and doing something completely different and opposite. Um, and what is the one thing? <laughs> that David lists um, if you're struggling well what, well, what could I do <laughs> is a good start seek peace uh, uh, and pursue it or maintain it <laughs> uh, oh right okay um, it's tough isn't it it's tough because now this is, this is where the challenge comes in seeking peace because everybody nowadays is taught you're taught to do it even in school is to look after number one yeah to look after your own interests because nobody else will yeah yes what you've been taught and that's what you've been told and that's what society is building itself is you look after number one because nobody else will but that's not seeking peace that's actually um ending up in is going to end up in conflict um it, un, unnecessary conflict 
seeking peace, however, <laughs> now listen, is looking for ways to trust the Lord first because he is looking after you. I'll just say that again. For you and for me to be looking out for ways to trust God first because he is looking after you. Ah, and now there's more. Having found a way of trusting God because you know he's looking after you and you are looking out for ways to seek peace. Uh, now, having found those ways and taken action on doing something about it, instead of standing up to fight your own corner, you actually trust God to fight the corner for you. Um, instead of seeking ways to maintain that that's mine, that's my right, mm, to keep my rights, mm. well, actually, to trust God because he's got your back and he'll make sure that he's looking out for you. And therefore, you don't have to look out for yourself. You can start looking out for others <laughs> so that they come to know God like you do and put their trust in him. And those who would seek to be your enemies, Jesus said it, will then become your friends. What a wonderful way of doing life. It's a signpost that God gives for happiness and contentment. <laughs> but I'm going to say it now. You have to work at it. Oh, work again. <laughs> Just when I've been furloughed, I've got to work again. <laughs> Don't get used to the furlough. <laughs> it's time to work at it. Yeah, you've got to maintain it. That's what it says. And to seek peace and pursue it, or maintain it, as in the New Living Translation. So here, here's some scriptures for you on seeking peace. And and they're really poignant ones. You, you, you may want to write these down and, and make a note of them and, and, and research them afterwards. Because... But let God speak to you through this. And I know that as you look for ways, looking for ways to trust the Lord first, because he is looking after you, will change a whole host of things in life. The way you speak and deal with your neighbours, the, the way that you speak and, and um, accept what the boss says in work, um, the, the way that you you are um, you deal with promotion or interviews and 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 the the outcome remember <laughs> look for ways hmm, to trust God first because he's looking after you all right so here it is here are the scriptures for seeking seeking peace Psalm 120 verse 7 these are all from the new living translation by the way. Psalm 120 verse 7 I search for peace but when I seek but when I speak of peace they want war it's hard work Proverbs 12 verse 20 deceit fills hearts that are plotting evil joy fills hearts that are planning peace <laughs> it's happy it's happy work <laughs> hmm Matthew 5, verse 9. Now, you see, this psalm, to me, speaks of something of the Beatitudes. Did you not notice that? You know, blessed is the man. Yeah, you, we're blessed, aren't we? So, Matthew 5, verse 9. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. Romans 12, verse 18. Paul's advice. Do all you can to live in peace with everyone. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11. Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Be joyful. Grow to maturity. Encourage each other. Live in harmony and peace. And notice this now at the end. Then the God of love and peace will be with you. See? 
We know from Romans chapter 13 that God is the God of hope. And now we're told at the end of his uh, second letter of Corinthians, then the God of love and peace is the God of hope, he's God of love, and he's the God of peace will be with you. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 13, and live peacefully with each other. Hebrews 12 verse 14, work at living, <laughs> oh no, it's work, did he say work again? Yeah, work at living in peace with everyone. And work at living a holy life. <laughs> oh, it's busy. You're busy. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. As I said yesterday, holiness is being separate, being different, um, but being equipped to be separate and different. Because why? You've turned. You've turned from a life of evil, and now you are living a life of good. And First of all, on the list, David says, seek peace and maintain it. James chapter 3, verses 17 to 18, I'll finish with these. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. <laughs> Come on. Have a look at those scriptures again. Get your Bibles out, dig them out and have a look. Read it through yourself and see what God says to you about the work he has for you. <laughs> you, you, you know, these are tough times. Um, and it's in tough times when we really do start to search our hearts um, to know what God's will is for us, what his desires are for us, and what his signposts are for me in life. And here it is, live for him, live, living for God. On top of the list is making that turn, doing good. And first of all, you can do that by seeking peace and maintaining it. <laughs> but it will mean working at it. it <laughs> when the Holy Spirit prompts you to do something, don't ignore him, do it. And that will mean looking for ways to trust God first because he's looking after you. Have a good day, be blessed, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your signpost that points us to a life of happiness and contentment as we trust you, that we trust you first. We will look today for ways of putting you first, of trusting you first, because we know that you're looking after us. Help us, Lord, to seek peace and to pursue it and to maintain it, to work at it, so that those seeds that are sown, the good seeds that are sown, will indeed produce a, a rich harvest of righteousness in the future. For those who are struggling with addictions, Lord, that their focus has become just one thing in life that is overwhelming and, and taken away the joy of knowing you. Lord, I pray today that they will indeed turn. They will turn to you and turn away from those ways of uh, wickedness and ways of, of uh, being completely distracted and, and overwhelmed and overcome by all sorts of addictions. Lord, we pray today, I pray that they will turn from those ways, those ways of thinking and turn to you, to know you, to live for you, so that they indeed will become a harvest of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. See you tomorrow. Bye.